You know, just because I like her outfit. And I like how she... I don't know. I just like her. I find her the cutest of them all. My favorite guy is obviously Kata, Mr. Red Hair. He's voiced by uh, Nobuyuki Hiyama. Who you guys know as Link, Hiei, Vague, and Siegfried. You know how it is. Anyway, so watch second season that did that. Then I moved on to the third season. Uh, the second season, you know, overall, it was nice. I mean, I don't exactly know if I had the exact same sort of feeling as uh, I did when I watched Kohimi and Musa. By feeling, I mean it had like that same charm. It basically did, but I don't know. And then came the third season where, you know, I picked up where I left off and, you know, it's like, okay, I understand everything now. They're all, you know, part of this little army and whatnot. They're essentially, you know, the... I don't remember the name of that army, of the kingdom. I mean, they're like three kingdoms. Um, But, you know, I watched it. And I they had to get, like, a formula to save this one girl from becoming a cat, which they do. Then they ha move on to going into war with this one person. But then this guy who's, like, working with, like, a leader, like, turns this one person into a rat. Then he becomes, like, the big leader, and he has, like, this powerful book. And then uh, Ryubi gets, like, her dragon sword. Or, which she gets in, like, the first episode. It's like, she gets this badass dragon sword. And whatnot. And, you know, that was a fun watch. This anime also introduced a few other characters. Um, it introduced, like, a bunch of, like, random characters sort of joining the group. Including like, this group of like furry girls who are like obsessed with boobs. I find that so odd. An anime. That's almost like a new stereotype. One, everyone knows karate. There has to be one blonde girl. And three, uh, there has to be a female character or group of characters that are obsessed with boobs. And they use terms like boobs or boobies. But you know, it was interesting. Definitely a good watch, all three of them. I remember though I was getting a little impatient with watching with watching the third one, and I do remember they actually introduced a like, you know, true lesbian character to where you know it's basically obvious with with Chone and uh, and uh, Soso. They, for one thing, with Chone it's like indisclosed right now or unsubstained, I suppose. Yeah, unsubstained. Because, you know, she ultimately sort of likes to flirt with girls, I think. I'm not sure if she's really a lesbian. So-so, it's plainfully obvious. Either that or she just has, you know, the... Or no, it's plain, painfully obvious. She fucking sleeps with Kanu, naked. And they show a scene, a scene of her. You can't really see anything. But they show her, like, stroking her vajay... Her vajayjay. I was gonna say vajay... I was gonna say vajayjay, but, you know. I was trying to combine vagina and vajayjay. I need to stop saying vagina. Anyway, but there's this other character named Gien, who, in my opinion, would have been my favorite character if she kept her fucking sword. Instead, she had to use, like, some weird giant dumbbell thing. You guys know Garl Vinland from Demon Souls? She uses the same weapon as he does. Like, literally the exact same weapon. That's probably where it came from. Um, she would have been my favorite character just because I thought she looked cool and... She has a lot of honor, and, you know, I kind of felt bad for her, you know. She was in love with friggin' Ryubi, and she had, like, she had to, like, her teacher had to, like, put, like, a rule on her. like, don't hit, kill people with your effing sword, but she had to, like, she had to, you know, protect, you know, her girlfriend or her lover. And then she ends up joining the good side, and, of course, she, of course, someone calls her out at the end, like, she was like, uh. Oh. It's kind of funny. It's an interesting show. Very, very, very interesting. I have played the visual novel, in case you guys want to know. Uh, I've gotten, you know, a little far. I, I haven't played enough of it to really understand how far in the line it goes. But, you know, it, it introduces a male character. And, you know, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Honestly, it's a little... The art style's different, for one thing. I actually prefer the anime art style over the the visual novel one. I just think it looks better. Maybe it's just because of the way it's shaded and drawn, but, you know. It starts off actually in modern times, and there's actually one character in particular who's drawn better than everyone else. Probably because he doesn't appear that much. 
Anywho, um, let's see what else. Um, I do have the DVD. Um, I've watched Transangel and I watched up to the big boy episode, the episode with So So having sex with Kanu. We're supposed to fucking watch that, but he's busy, so we can't really watch that. Oh well, we'll pick it up some other time. And the second season is coming out. It's a. Uh, it was licensed by Sent. Both seasons, all three seasons were actually uh, licensed by Sentai Filmworks, and the second one's coming out March first. I am going to pre-order it for my birthday. Cause you know, good series. It's gonna suck though if they end up, you know, put making like a complete collection version. I won't buy that unless there's like one extra thing on. It's like, oh, but. We included an extra, an extra figure that has full articulation in every part of her body. You can literally make her eyes move or something. I don't know. There are act- there are figures on the internet, but they're f- freaking figures. They're not like they're not like the Figma or the Bandai figures. I like freaking poseable figures, not figurines. Anyway, that's really what I think about the series. Overall, you know, it's a great anime. I'd recommend it in Japanese only because it has not been dubbed. I would like to see it dubbed. Personally, I think Linda Young would be perfect for Soso. Her young Genkai voice, perfect for Soso. Everyone else is, you know, I'm not sure they can really go with whoever they want. Since it's Sentai, Sentai Filmworks, they could probably get like a lot of the uh, uh, ADV films and Funimation voice actors. I'll say this much though for Kata. I'm expecting either David Montranga or Andy McCavin. I can see Todd Hapricorn being him as well, but he'd have to speak in like a lower voice. Maybe even J. Michael Tatum, I don't know. Anywho, let me talk a little bit about a for- about the possibilities of a fourth season real quick. I actually think they should do one. I don't know if they will. I don't know any much about anything of the... Uh, 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 Romance of the Three Kingdoms. As much as I know, I really only get it from Dynasty Warriors, and of course with Dynasty Warriors 7, there's a whole new faction, the Jin faction, where Sima Yi, which for those of you who care to know, is she's the, uh, and Koi Yume Muzo, she's the girl, the short girl who's like K- Kome, where she, uh, where, uh, she wears like a witch hat. Think about that. Think about her being the ruler of a whole different army. Ain't that just interesting? Anyway, find that kind of interesting. And plus, you know, it's 2011. We and for the last three seasons came at sort of like a yearly basis. The first one came out 2008. The second one came out 2009. Then the third one came out 2010. It's 2011. I'm not exactly sure when they'll make a, a fourth one. I hope they do though. But yeah, that's what I have to say about Koi Hime Muzo. Watch it right now. Watch it right now. Watch it right now. I will see you guys later.